This is probably my favorite feature. Hey everyone, Peace Man Kamanacha, and today I'm playing around with Windows VR and the Acer headset. Now in this video, what I'm going to be looking at is the Windows toolkit for developing for this, and we'll just be specifically just kind of breaking that down and seeing how that works. But if you want something about anything more specific, these headsets also work with Steam VR, so you can follow any of the videos that are already on our channel. Now, that said, if you have any specific questions about anything of that, the Windows API or anything about these headsets, definitely leave a comment below and I'll try to get that into a separate video at some other time. Now, I should also mention that throughout this video, I'm going to be calling this a Windows VR headset. And the reason for that is I'm calling it exactly what it is, which is a VR headset, not a mixed reality headset, because those terms can get really confusing. Now that said, I don't think Windows VR is a bad platform for actually developing on. In fact, I actually think it's a pretty convenient one for both developers and also consumers. It's actually really easier to set up compared to the Vive or the Rift. And to me, that's actually pretty exciting, especially at the price point that it's at. And the other thing that I should also keep in mind, which is one of the reasons why I'm showing the store on the screen right now, is that there aren't that many games. If we actually go ahead and take a look at what's on here, we'll see that a lot of them are familiar titles, and there's only 47 at the time of this recording, which from a developer side of things is actually really good because that means your app has a good chance of actually standing out and being noticed compared to, say, the Steam or the Oculus Store, where it's really kind of a mess already to kind of figure out what you want to actually play. So that, to me, is actually pretty exciting. So let's go ahead and just kind of, with that said, let's dive into kind of breaking down how you might get onto the store using the Windows API in Unity. So for that, Microsoft has already made a great tool for actually just kind of walking through those steps. So I'll leave links to these in the description, but needless to say, uh, they're pretty straightforward, and I think that's really good. So for any project, and let me just hop into Unity here, and go to the build settings, you'll need to set up the universal Windows platform. And you, if you don't have that installed in your current Unity version, that's okay. There should be like a load button here that you can press to install it into your current build. You will need, at this, at this time, you'll need Unity 2017.2, and probably it'll support anything in the future as well. And you'll just need to set up these defaults. They should, they should come automatically and that's pretty much all you need to kind of get this up and running within your build settings. Within player settings, just like most VR apps, you can go out to your XR settings and enable virtual reality supported. Make sure Windows VR <laughs> is, is set up here and you should be good to go. So once you have that, if you actually go ahead and hit play within any of your, your settings, you should, you should get that little noise that's playing in the background. And if you put the headset on, you should just be within a standard Unity application. So very straightforward to actually set up, which is actually really good. Now, if we go back here, you can, you can read through these. If you need any specific requirements when you actually create a build, these are some of those things that you, you can set up. I've actually gone ahead and set them up already within my publishing settings. You just have to check these, these marks to, to actually make sure that your app has the permissions it needs. So that's all set up. This is also for the HoloLens. And you should be good to go if you just follow this. Again, I'll leave a link to this in the description. Now, the other thing that these headsets come with is motion controllers. And so I think it's also important to actually figure out how you can do that. And for this, it becomes a little tricky. And I think this is probably a still a work in progress for the Microsoft and Unity teams. But what they're trying to do is enable it so that within Unity, you have an input system that works for all positionally tracked controllers. However, at the time of this, it doesn't quite work <laughs> the way we want it to. And so instead, what we need to do is actually, if you, if you read through this, you'll, you'll see that they send you to this GitHub page, which is actually really well done. It's called the Windows Mixed Reality Toolkit. The reason for that name is because it works for the HoloLens and the Mixed and the VR headsets. That said, it's I personally would have actually really liked for this to be two separate repos. I kind of find it a little confusing to call this like a Holo toolkit in here. There's definitely some like 
naming and consistency issues that really need to be figured out in this repo. It's because just because the inputs are really different between the HoloLens, which has these pinches, and these headsets, which have physical controllers that you can you can actually hold, and that that to me can can be confusing. Rant aside, you basically once you have once you get to this link, go ahead, go to the assets folder, go to Holo Toolkit and examples. You'll need to copy these both into your actual uh, Unity uh, application. So I've gone ahead and dragged in the two folders. You can see here in my Unity project, we have the Holo Toolkit and we've got Holo Toolkit examples. When you do that, you'll have a mixed reality toolkit here at the top. You'll want to go ahead and configure your project settings. This is actually what's going to allow you to go ahead and actually use your controllers. So I've gone ahead and included basically everything here. You don't have to include everything, but uh, that's probably the safest thing to do if you want to, uh, to make sure you have all the functionality. Uh, you can also go ahead and apply whatever WP settings here. I mentioned that you can do that in the publisher side, but you can also do it here if you if you want to. So that's an, that's another option. Once you're here, let's go ahead and go to your examples. Go to input. Go to scenes. We have a bunch of scenes here, but what I'm going to focus on is the motion controller one. When you do that, assuming you have everything already set up in your project, you have the build settings and the player settings set up, go ahead, hit play, and put the headset on. So once you have this scene running, and I'll be honest, it's been kind of a little buggy for me to get the controllers running, but if you do get that, and you might have to basically just apply your project settings a few times, you'll see here you have the left, right, and any debug messages that are coming in. Uh, you have a position. There are two things for the pointers and the grips and you have a bunch of inputs for your triggers as well. I can actually go ahead and if I press any of the triggers, the gaze pointer moves with me right here. And if I click on the cube, we'll see that it starts growing and I can do that with really <laughs> any of them. And yeah, so we can also use the thumb pad to actually to rotate and teleport around. So that's all built in here. So you basically, what you'll want to do is make sure that you can get that scene actually running. And when you do, that's when you know you're, you're actually ready to go about actually developing. So that's that scene. And then I also wanted to show you guys the motion controller grab scene, because I think that's also just gives you more examples to play around with. So you can find that under motion controller scenes. Go ahead, hit play. All right, here in the grab control scene, I'm gonna go ahead, teleport, and we can use the grab button on the side, and this is mostly just kind of standard VR. You won't have the ability to throw. So they have a bunch of different cubes in here if you wanna kind of go ahead and see how they've implemented things. So grab to follow. Oh, there we go, so now it's following my hand. Bunch of different cubes. So let's kind of uh, see how this is broken down. So for starters, you have the mixed reality camera parent. So if you've done Steam VR, then it's very similar. It's just kind of a parent that controls the camera, controls your motion controllers, and gives them a little rendering to that. You also have the boundary if you set it up. I don't have mine set up because I don't have a lot of space, so we're just doing a standing mode right now. You have the cursor here, so that's what's going to raycast out from either your headset or your two controllers, and they'll point towards wherever you want them to actually point. So it's a nice little indicator to show you where, where you're actually clicking. You've got a couple managers here. So this is specifically the input manager. You can see a bunch of scripts here on the side for the, the focus, kind of single pointer. And this allows you to basically choose whether I want you to use motion controllers, Xbox controller, uh, mouse and keyboard. And those are kind of the three main things that are kind of set up for you. And last thing, you have the scene content. So you can see basically all of these cubes and how they interact. So let's take a look at one of the grabbable ones. So this child here. So you can see they've written a script for grabbing the child and setting its color. And let's go ahead and actually open one of these. So you can see as part of this toolkit, they've provided kind of example grabbable that you can use and kind of base that off of. And they have just basically a bunch of different methods that you go ahead and override. Let's actually go ahead, go to go to definition. So here's their base grabbable. They've created basically just a bunch of different events. 
a bunch of different methods for you to, to actually go ahead and implement. And all you really need to do is actually go ahead and override whatever you want to actually happen. So pretty simple in that sense. You can have physics, you can have whatever you want. So that's basically a high level kind of a breakdown of how this works. Again, there's just so much code in here. And in many senses, you could actually probably compare this to VRTK, um, just Microsoft's version. For all you know, someone in the community and VRTK has probably already figured out how, how to use Windows Mixed Reality with VRTK. So then you have that option as well. So that pretty much does it for this video. Um, let me know again if there are any questions specifically about Windows Mixed Reality that you have. If you did like this video, make sure to smack that like button because that helps us out a ton. And subscribe if you are new to the channel. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.